Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to build a fake in-camera transition in Apple Motion for Final Cut Pro. If you don't know what I mean by in-camera transition, let me give you a quick little explainer. It's basically something you do while you're shooting your content. So if you knew the sequence that you wanted your shots to appear in, in your final video, you would start with your first shot, shoot, 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 shoot. And then when you're ready to stop, you whip off, let's say to the left. And then for the next shot in your sequence, you whip in from the left and land on your next shot. So in Final Cut, what you would do is take those two shots and theoretically you wouldn't even need to apply a transition between them. You could just do a straight cut and because of the motion blur and the fast whip, the shot would look seamless theoretically. But to do successful in-camera transitions, you obviously have to plan for it in advance. So today I'm gonna cover you if you didn't do that prep work during your shoot. I'm gonna show you how to kind of mock an in-camera transition. If you wanna know more about in-camera transitions, I'm gonna put an amazing video from a great creator down in the description. His name is... Hold on. Yeah, his name is Jesse Driftwood and he made a spectacular video about in-camera transitions, truly inspirational and aspirational. But if it's too late for you, your shoot is already in the can, but you do wanna harness those in-camera transitions, I got you covered. Let's head on over to Apple Motion. So here is my project browser. Here are all my settings. And I wanna draw your attention to the fact that the duration of my project is just 12 frames and I'm not going to make a final cut transition. We're actually going to build this as a final cut title. A little unusual, but I like building transitions this way because I feel like it gives me more control over the timing of my transitions once I publish them to Final Cut Pro. And I'm actually gonna be building this transition in two parts with two separate published titles. The first half will be the end of my transition, the first half of the transition. So we're gonna be mocking up a left whip so so the first title we build will be as if we're shooting our shot and then we whip off to the left. And then the second title will actually be whipping in to the left to settle on our shot. So that is the in-camera transition we're going to be mocking up in motion. So all that said, we're gonna select final cut title. So let's take a look at this default title project. There's some text here already by default. I don't need that text. I'm just going to delete it out of my project pane and then I'm going to enable this title background. Basically what this is, is like a drop zone. So for now, I'm just going to take any random B-roll shot. I'm going to replace this title background with this B-roll shot. Now, why would I do this? Now, as you know, a lot of times when you're working with titles in Final Cut Pro, the title will actually affect what's ever happening to the video underneath. It. So this drop zone here, this dummy shot that I placed in here is basically like a placeholder. So while I'm working in motion, I can see how I would be theoretically affecting the video underneath my title in Final Cut Pro. Does that make sense? So the shot here is just going to allow us to predict how our transition is going to look when we publish it into Final Cut Pro. By the way, guys, if you're interested in my working files, join my Patreon community. All of my patrons get access to all of the working files from all of my tutorials on Apple Motion here on YouTube. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is add a camera to this project to make it 3D. And then in the inspector window under properties, let's increase the scale on this camera, which basically makes us zoom out of our frame. So let's say about here. So it's important for you to understand that I didn't shrink down my video here. What I did was back up the camera so I could see more around that video clip. Now remember, I said this transition is going to mock a whip to the left. Now you can see since we zoomed out, there's no environment around our shot. So in real life, if I was shooting and then I did my whip to the left, there would be all sorts of stuff over here because we live in a 3D world. But in this motion, project, there's nothing to see. So we need to create an environment around the shot that we can whip to. So we're not just whipping to negative space. So what I'm going to do is create clone layers. Clone layers are basically duplicates of your original media. But the way clone layers work is that if you change something about your original clip, it will be reflected in the clone layer, but you can do stuff to the clone layer that doesn't affect the original clip. So to create a clone, let's just select our title background in the project pane, and you can use the shortcut K or you can right click and select make clone layer. So now you can see in my project pane, 
I have my original title background and this clone layer. So I'm gonna select this clone layer and I'm gonna rename it at this point to stay organized. Let's call this left side. And I'm going to move this clone layer, guess what, to the left of my main title background. So I'm going to reposition this on the X axis to negative 3840, because remember this is a 4K project, so I've got perfect spacing between my two shots here. Now obviously this does not look seamless. We've got a sharp, harsh line here. So what we're going to do is select that left side clone layer, head on over to filters, let's go down to distortion, and let's select flop. And now you can see, let me zoom in, it looks pretty seamless. I've got a mirror image of my original clip. Now my project pane, I wanna duplicate this because I wanna put another version of this video on the right side. So we're gonna duplicate. I'm going to rename this right side. And on the position, I'm going to give it a value of positive 3840 on the X position. Let me zoom out my canvas so you can see. I've got three versions of my video clip and they're all mirror images of each other. Now at this point, I wanna to demonstrate to you how the clone layer works. So now I'm gonna grab a different B-roll shot and I'm going to drag it and replace it in my project pane over the original title background. And so do you see what I mean now about the clone layers? Whatever you do to your original media will affect your clone layers. So we've got our composition laid out here. What we're going to do next is start building the camera moves and the blur that we would have if we did a real life in camera transition. So I wanna start by first adding the blur and I want this blur to affect all of my shots. So I'm going to work at the group level here. You can see I've got a group that has both of my clone layers and my original media. Let's select that group, head on over to filters, we're gonna to go to blur and I'm going to select the directional blur. Now you may be wondering why I'm not using the motion blur in Apple Motion. I did some tests with this and I definitely found that I preferred the look of the directional blur. Now we wanna keyframe this blur because remember, we're mocking a in-camera transition that you would do in real life. So your shot would start clear, right? Cause you're steady. And then it would get progressively more blurry as you built up speed, as you whipped around. So we're going to queue up our playhead to the beginning of our timeline. And on our group under filters, we've got our directional blur. I'm going to add a keyframe here and I'm going to reduce the amount to zero. Then I'm going to move my playhead to the end of my timeline and I'm going to crank up that amount to a value of 1000. So let's run our playhead over just a few frames. We're going from crystal clear to totally blurry. Now I wanna draw your attention when I move my playhead to about the middle of my project here, I get these two dark lines. With the directional blur, it softens the edges of your frames. And so we get these little dark lines at the seams in our composition. I have found the best way to conceal these is with a gradient blur. So again, select it on the group level. Let's head back on up to filters. We're gonna to go to blur and we're gonna select gradient blur. And I'm just gonna use these on-screen controls to move my gradient blur in a more horizontal orientation. And then again, let's cue up our playhead to the beginning of our timeline and let's keyframe the amount on this. I'm gonna start at zero and then we're gonna to jump to the end of our timeline and we're going to make this a value of 25. And then we're gonna check our work and make sure, yeah, those dark lines are gone. Okay, so we've got our blur going here. Now let's work on the camera movement. I wanna select the camera in my project pane and I wanna reset the scale because I want it to be just at 100. So we're full frame here on our center shot. Now I'm gonna cue up my playhead to the beginning of my timeline and I'm gonna add a keyframe on the position line at the start and then we're going to jump to the end of my timeline and we're gonna enter a value on the X position of negative 3840. So do you see what's happening? I'm gonna arrow through, we're starting clear on our center shot, and then we're getting progressively more blurry until the end of the first half of our transition. Now, if I play this back for you, it doesn't feel quite natural, does it? It's because this movement is happening at a constant pace over the duration of our 12 frames. And in reality, that's not how your body would move if you were shooting an in-camera transition. You would actually accelerate 
over time as you swung away from your shot, right? So let's head on over to the keyframe editor and modify these keyframes. So we're gonna wanna make sure our interpolation is set to Bezier. And then here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab my first handle, hold down the shift key, and I'm going to elongate this tangent here. And then I'm going to grab my second keyframe and I'm going to tighten this up. Again, holding down the shift key, making sure I'm not changing my X positions. And so now you can see that the motion really accelerates. So this is the first half of our transition. Let's publish it to Final Cut. So I'm just gonna head on up to File and Save As, and let's call this Left Whip In. I'm gonna create a new category. And under theme, I'm not gonna have a theme. Now at this point, I would normally head on over to Final Cut and check out that title I just published and make sure I was happy with it, but I feel pretty confident we did it right. Let's make the second half of this transition. So the first thing I'm going to do is head on up to the file menu again, and let's select Save As, and we're gonna call this template Left Whip Out, and we're gonna put it in that same category, Whip Transitions, and we're gonna publish it. Now the next thing I'm going to do is change the duration of this project. So at the top of the timeline, we're gonna drop down here and show project duration. And I'm gonna change this to 20 frames. And then I'm going to select all of the elements in my timeline, cue up my playhead to the end and hit the O key to extend everything out. And let me just expand my range here. All right, so for the second half of the transition, we need to do the exact opposite of what we built here. So remember, the first half was the having my shot and whipping out, and the second half is going to be the whip into my shot. So the first thing I need to do is reverse these keyframes because on the second half of the transition, the shot would start blurry and end clear. So I'm just gonna grab these keyframes and I'm just going to swap the position of them. So I'm dragging the first one to the end of the filter and the second one to the beginning. And then we're gonna have to adjust the keyframes on the camera as well. So selected on the camera in my project pane, let's head on over to properties. On this first keyframe, we actually want the camera to be centered on the shot to the right of our composition. Do you remember this? So I'm gonna make this a positive 3840 value. And then on the second keyframe of the camera, I'm going to make that X value zero. So we're back center frame. And then I'm just going to move this keyframe to the end of my project. And so if I scrub through my timeline, it starts blurry, it's moving to the left and it's landing center frame. But the motion on this is not gonna be right. See, it's accelerating and we need it to decelerate. So in the keyframe editor, I'm just gonna invert the shape of my tangents. So holding down the shift key while I grab this little handle, I'm gonna bring it in. And then on the second keyframe, holding down my shift key, and we're gonna extend this out. So that's the second half of our transition. Now I need to do the professional thing and clear out this dummy shot that I put in. So I'm going to select my title background in the project pane, head on over to image, and I'm going to hit the clear button. So now we're back to just that gray slate remember this you can see why i wanted to drop in a video clip right because it's really hard to tell what you're doing when you're just looking at this gray slate so i'm going to hit command s to save that work and then i need to clear out my left whip in so i'm going to open that head back to the title background inspector let's clear that too and then i'm going to hit command s to refresh now let's head on over to final cut and show you our finished work so I've got these two shots of a construction site here, and I wanna add my in-camera transition between these two shots. So let's head on over to Titles, Whip Transitions. Here's the first title, Left Whip In. I'm gonna drop it here, and Left Whip Out is longer. Remember, we made the second half 20 frames. And that is our in-camera transition. And you can really see why I like doing these as titles because I could slow down the second half of the transition. The motion doesn't have to be centered on the kite. So you have a lot more flexibility depending on the nature of your shots. So that is how you can build a fake in-camera transition in Apple Motion. If you guys wanna learn more about motion, check out my course, Motion Launchpad, available at jenjager.com. Thanks for hanging out. Here's some other videos for you. I'll see you again.